Are you looking for truth from God's word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Clarity Christian College, formerly known as Florida Bible College. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. So all of a sudden, Jesus is going to model for us that he was given a crisis. I'm sure he was heading to another city. I'm sure that he was a busy man that at the same time had focus. He had priorities. He was going to go reach other people. But underneath his one focus was that he was going to teach, preach, heal. So now he had to, watch this, neglect the masses perhaps in another city, knowing that there'd be one person who probably could not give anything back to him. He was a blind man, and blind people in the Bible days did not have support groups. They didn't have public programs to be able to clean them up. These guys usually had nobody around them. They were ugly. They stunk worse than street people. They were like this for days, years perhaps blind. Whatever they could basically eat. And here's this man going out of Jesus. And Jesus knew that he had a purpose, and that purpose was to heal. And now he knew that he had to have a particular priority in his life. And that priority is there was someone there that asked a need. Now, he didn't stay in the area and say, anybody else sick? He went to the one that asked and had a need. Will you help me? So think about that in your own life. Once you know your purpose, now you can begin to prioritize your life. Let's go to number three. In the life of Christ, promptness involved proactiveness. That means he had some plans. Jesus took care of some of the details. Let's look at how he took care of some of the details. It says, So Jesus stood still, and he commanded that person to be brought to him, the blind man. And when he had come near, he asked him, and he said, What do you want me to do for you? Now let's pause for just a moment. Those of you that know enough of Scripture, you would already probably have an answer for this. But those that are coming into this, you're going to say, Wait a second, doesn't Jesus know all things? If he knows all things, why is he asking this guy what he wants? Because he already should know what he wants. That's a legitimate question. I could understand that. I'd be asking the same question at the beginning of my journey too. How would he do that if he already knows? I don't question. I know he knew what he needed to do. I believe that in this is a lesson for us. That we're not Jesus. We won't always know what the other people really want. And so it's for us then to discern what it is. Instead of jumping to a conclusion and judging and assuming what they already need, it might be good for us to pull back for just a moment. Throw up a quick prayer and say, God, you know the end from the beginning. You know what these people need. Help me to be able to be discerning. And then you, in a servant spirit, like Jesus, you then reach out to that person. Your plan now, here it is is to, first of all, glorify the Lord by discovering and living out your purpose, prioritizing your life to do what God has called you to do, and then your plan is to find out, here it is, specifically what do you need to do. This way it's going to hopefully push away from you a lot of the, the, the voices and the noises that you hear of the people screaming for your attention. Because now you're a person who knows what God has called you to do. And you're developing your particular plan. Well, it doesn't just stop there. It goes a little bit further. What do you want me to do? And the blind man said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Now that's interesting. We know he's blind. We probably would sense that's what he really needs. Now listen carefully to what I'm about to say. It's very important. You and I now, looking at this story that are spiritual, we'd say, oh yeah, he needs his sight, yeah, that's important, but he has a deeper need than that. He needs Jesus. He, he, he needs to have that felt need taken care of. But more than that, he needs that deeper need. He needs Christ. Well, Jesus knew he needed himself, that this man needed him, Christ. But at the same time, he had to, he had to take care of a felt need. Now, go back to the felt needs. This man probably had more than one need, One need could have been, I need to be clean. I need a friend. I need to have some money. I need to be taken here or this or that. There could have been a dozen different needs. But this man said, I need to have my sight. All right? And so Jesus asked that question, and he got the response, need the sight. So let me encourage you at this particular time, when you're now looking at all the arrays of situations that are out there, instead of immediately jumping into this thing without sensing, where is God leading you? Maybe our lack of promptness is we put too much into our Palm Pilots and our calendars and our life and therefore we can't be prompt any longer because we just can't swim fast enough to get to the shore. And I want to encourage you. 
You go to the Lord. Develop your purpose. Find out what happens to be your priorities. Develop your plans and find out what do they need. Now the story will go a little bit further than that, but that's an important thing to do. That my sight would be given to me. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. It's interesting how it moved from sight, recognizing this man had faith in him. All right, let's go to the fourth and final one here. And that is the fact that if you are um, someone like Christ, what else does this involve? Promptness involves immediacy, having no procrastination. Now, I know right now I'm really in the deep weeds because there are a lot of folks that have struggles with procrastination. Some of you really, really struggle with it big time. And I want you to know that I really love you and I really care for you, but why would a person sometimes struggle with procrastination? Well, we talked a little bit about it. Some of it could be a passive aggression. Some people, procrastination could be because you have learned to procrastinate. Now, stay with me on this. Because you've never felt the sting or the penalty when you were late. So now that has moved into a complete habit, lifestyle, that you just go through life being late and it really doesn't matter any longer. And if people like you fine, if they don't, that's okay too. You're just going to keep on being yourself. And all of a sudden, watch this, your whole world becomes all about you. And so you're going to run your world your way and you don't care whether or not you keep your word. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying it can, re it can deteriorate all the way to that bit of selfishness because I won't make a commitment. If I have a commitment, I'll try to get out of that commitment. I won't show up on time. And I'm going to try to find every other reason to blame someone else for my reason for being late rather than manning up, womaning up, young personing up to that situation. I think we need to be very, very careful. So watch out for those little habits, those little foxes that come in to spoil the vine because that's what's going to hurt us and make us become more a person lacking promptness in our life. I thought this would be time for us to have some humor, so I did a little background and hope you appreciate this. I came up with what is known as the Procrastinator's Creed. So those of you that are procrastinators, see how you would fit with this creed. I don't know. <clears throat> A procrastinator's creed says, I believe that if anything is worth doing, it would have been done already. A procrastinator's creed said, I shall never move quickly except to avoid more work or find excuses. A procrastinator's creed says, I will never rush into a job without a lifetime of consideration. A procrastinator's creed says, I shall meet all my deadlines directly in proportion to the amount of bodily injury I could expect from missing them. <laughs> in other words, if I'm really going to get you know, banged over the head for being late, then I'll go ahead and step in and do it. This one says, I truly believe that all deadlines are unreasonable regardless of the amount of time given. <laughs> Another one says, if at first I don't succeed, well, there's always next year. This one I thought was cute. It says, I shall always begin, start, initiate, take the first step, and or write the first word when I get around to it. And two more in the creed it says, I know that the work cycle is not plan, start, finish, but rather it is wait, plan, plan. Right? And then finally, 13, I will never put off tomorrow what I can forget about forever. Now, I don't know if that's your creed or not, but sometimes it is that. Let me go one more step on this procrastination. It might not be so heavy in the path of aggression or sin necessarily. It might be in the area where it's a very kind of a passive sin. And, that, and I, that's my word. I don't know. Maybe I can come up with a better word. You can email me one. But a passive sin would be, you know what? I'm really afraid to take action because I may fail. I'm really afraid to say that I'll be on because I may not do it right. Or, or here's one better. I'll say yes to everybody. I'll, I'll promise that I'll do all of this stuff, but then I'm, I'm, I'm chronically late in getting things done because I'm not strong enough to be able to say, I'm not able to do that for you. I cannot get that done at the front end. And we try to hopefully scratch it out at the back end of the situation. And we lack the courage or the fortitude to be up front at the very front side of it. And for those of you that are recognizing in your spirit right now that that might be the case, let me give you just a little thought on that. If you go back to what is your purpose, what are your priorities, what are your plans, and now watch this. You go to the Lord now and you say, Lord, I want you to help me by giving me the strength 
to right at the very beginning not leave the person believing that I'm going to be or get something to them at a certain time and help me now to tell them that in a very gracious way and I'm going to leave the results to you if I disappoint the person. The momentary disappointment of that person now will be less impactive than the later disappointment of the person when I am late or don't turn it in or don't show up at all. And so work on that between you and the Lord. You make that to be a wonderful journey between you and God. And I'd like you to remember this with all your heart. The Lord is right there. He says, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So you can boldly say here, the Lord is your helper. He will help you be strong so you can be prompt when you need to be prompt. All right, number three. What could I do to demonstrate promptness? Well, by the power of God, to the glory of God, I can do the following three things. First, I can learn to arrange my schedule to be on time. Little practical things. I should learn to arrange my schedule so I can be on time. Be a little bit more directive in what I do. Check out my word and what I say. It's a part of my purpose and my priority. The next one would be to respond immediately to the requests of others. When someone asks you to do, maybe right then, either say you can do it or say you can't do it. And if you are going to do it, don't put it off. Do it right then. Because if not, you're actually piling up your schedule with a lot of clutter of things that are not done that can actually discourage you, overwhelm you, that you almost emotionally shut down from doing everything and anything, and you don't go back to the Lord then. You wallow around in this unnecessary guilt that you have. And so again, respond immediately to the requests of others. When they send you an email, answer it as quickly as you can, appropriately. If someone calls you, answer that cell phone message, the voice message they left for you as quickly as you can. When mom and dad ask you to do something, get it over with, get it done. You know, put it behind you. You know, work before pleasure. Get that little thing done so you can go out and play. Have some freedom in your life. Instead of putting it there and then carrying this load only knowing that you have to go back to it again and now it's exacerbated like a little piece of cancer that's now grown out of control. So, respond immediately. Number three. Avoid distractions that hinder focused attention. Avoid those distractions. And I don't want to get too much too practical on this, but I think you know what I'm saying. Those of you that sit at your computer a lot, whether it's for work or for study or for other things, it is very easy because by a click of the mouse, you can go into the world of the Internet. And the world of the Internet is very, very exciting. I'm not talking pornography and sin. I'm just going to say there's a lot of fascinating and interesting stuff out there. You could stay on all the Christian sites and fascinating pictures and stories and updated news that's out there. And somehow our minds, maybe by Satan, will make us explore all of that fun stuff that's so intriguing to us, that we're so interested in, that's so good... And Satan tricks us now because he keeps us from staying focused on that which would be great for the glory of God. Now, I don't know where you are. There may be certain people in your life that really are a distraction to your time. And you're not able to be prompt or punctual. Maybe it's a time for you to have a wonderful, loving, gracious, comfortable come to Jesus meeting with them and ask them to help you on some of these issues. It may be that By talking to that friend, as iron sharpened as iron, you may sharpen the countenance of your friend. So all we're saying is avoid the distractions that will hinder you from staying focused so you can get the things done that you've already committed to do. Besides all the things you want to do that are just kind of fun stuff for you. Stay focused on that. Well, I wanted to give you a couple of those things to think about, to pray over in your own life, and I'm sure the Lord will be there to help you. I left a statement there in your outline that you might want to ponder, and that is, we set an example our children will follow in life. If you find that your kids procrastinate, if you find that your kids are not prompt, you find that your kids are not punctual at either completing projects or getting things to you or doing the things you ask them to do, is it possible that maybe you have modeled before them that you tend to be late for things? You're the last one coming in, and I know you're busy, and you've got a whole bunch of other stuff, but could it be that you're raising up another generation that right now they're in the little box because you can control them, but they've watched you and how you do things in a prompt manner or the lack thereof. And later on, we're going to have another generation that, I'm saying this, watch this, tongue in cheek where that will be ringing the bell on Sunday morning and people will still want to talk out and they'll deny and not come in. We'll start a midweek service at 7 and people trickle in for 30 to 45 minutes. 
And the list goes on and on. And it's not to make you feel guilty, but it's for us to step up and say, you know, I, I didn't realize this, but th- there are ramifications. There are consequences to my lack of promptness. And I didn't realize, but I, I, I don't want to be that way. And God so much wants to help you. Look at some action steps you might consider. First of all, it's important to trust Christ as your Savior immediately. Don't put it off. I used the illustration of my dad. I'm so glad my dad trusted Christ because we did not know in the middle of shaving he'd be in heaven then. It happened that quick. So don't put off. Some of you are saying, I need more facts, I need more knowledge, and I want to give you more. And yes, there's more out there probably that could answer more of your questions, but you'll never have all your questions answered. That's why it's called F-A-I-T-H, faith. Sometimes you're going to have to cast yourself through faith on Christ even with all of your questions and doubts. Let me say it another way. You have to obey the Lord. He says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You may have to come with a reasonable amount of your doubts, but don't put it off. Be prompt to do this because none of us know when we're going to breathe our last. Number two, make a list of your priorities based on your purpose in life. Discover what that is. You want to glorify the Lord. Now, what are you doing that's glorifying the Lord? And what are some priorities that are kind of out of balance that's now causing you not to bring full glory to Him. Number three, get a good appointment calendar and then use it. Some of you have it, but do you actually use it and follow it and scratch things out and based on your priorities? And then follow this principle, and that is to teach your children now. Delayed obedience is often disobedience. To teach them the importance of stepping up and immediately obeying you right now and being very careful of, of encumbering their explanations back to you of why it didn't get done with a lot of, in their minds, reasons. But you then, as a parent, talk them through and show them that those aren't reasons. Those are just excuses. And let them know, watch this now, how beautiful they will feel when they experience what promptness is all about. I have one last quote to give to you. It's from someone by the name of Simmons. It was so neat. It kind of said everything that I was saying in this message except without Christ. I'm going to share it with you, and we'll end on Christ. Simmons said this, Promptness is not only a duty, but is also a part of good manners. It is favorable to fortune, reputation, influence, and usefulness. A little attention and energy will form the habit of promptness, so to make it easy and delightful. And that little bit of energy, a little bit of time, will help you develop that. And here's your energy. It's not you, I've got to be prompt. I've got to make it happen. I'm going to just run over people so I can be prompt. No, your energy is to say this. Lord, I can't be prompt. I've struggled with this for 10, 20, 30, 40, 70 years. I've struggled with this. And so my energy is now to you, Lord. I want to overcome this. I want to be different than I was before. Oh, God, I am going to you. And I'm trusting you as my personal Savior. You now come live inside of me. I want to have your nature now. And this old nature is just filled with being late and being all about me and my life and then blaming others for the way it turns out. But now, Lord, my new nature is all about bringing glory to you. And Lord, with it comes wisdom to know how to prioritize my life, when to say yes, when to say no, how to be discerning when this is a genuine reason and not just an excuse. Help me now, Father, to show others how glorifying you are because you are a prompt God. Lord, we want you to promptly answer our requests when we pray. And so now, Lord, we are promptly coming to you to have you now live your life of promptness out through us. Now, if you have not trusted Christ as your Savior yet, let me tell you, you can work on your promptness, but you won't have sustainable promptness. Your sustainable promptness will come when you go to Christ. He now lives inside of you. And then you go to him regularly. I pray that you'll do that. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes for just a moment. Would you do that? And um, maybe take a moment right now between you and the Lord to talk to Him. And here's what you're going to say to Him. Lord, I've struggled with uh, my lack of promptness. I know I've hurt relationships in the past. I know my testimony, my reputation is not the way that it should be. I know I work at it and I already know. I'm convicted, Lord, of all of this. Lord, I am a sinner. but this, And Lord, I need a Savior. And I know now that you, you hail promptness as a very high character trait. And I have fallen short of that. 
and I need a Savior, and I would like for you to forgive me right now. And so the best in know how I'm coming to you, not by my good works, not by anything that I have done. I'm coming to you just as I am, knowing that I'm lost. I'm lost in a sea of tardiness, of promises that have been unkept. Sometimes even deception and lies where I had to make up stories about why I couldn't do certain things. Lord, my life is a mess. I'm broken. I'm separated from you. And Lord, you said though that you would give me eternal life and forgive me and a new life in Christ. And so now, Lord, I come to you not by my good deeds, but my, my faith in you. And Lord, I don't have a whole lot of faith, but I have all the faith I have. It's in you, in you alone, and not myself. Now, my friend, however you put that into your own words, as long as you're transferring your trust to Christ and Christ alone and not coming to Him in other, any other way but by faith, Jesus says, He that believes on me has right now everlasting life. You have everlasting life, my friend. I pray that you would. I'd like to pray for you if today you came to the Lord promptly, so to speak, right now. You didn't put it off. You did it right now. I'd like to tell you that I want to promptly pray for you. I'm not going to put you off to later in the week and pray for you. I'm going to pray for you right now. Now, my praying for you won't get you into heaven, but I want to welcome you into God's faith family. I, I want to tell the Lord that I, I celebrate with you today. And I would like to know, is there anyone in here today that's trusting Christ? And, and I want to surrender myself again to the Lord to be your friend, to help you in your journey with Christ to become more like Him. Is there anyone here today that says, I'm not going to put it off any longer, but I'm going right now to Christ to be my forever Savior? And you'd like for me to pray for you. Is there anyone at all? Would you just slip up your hand? Is there anyone at all that today would do that? All right, Christians. I'd like to pray for you, and I'd like you to pray for me. I'm being prompt. Now, now's the time not to make all the excuses and the reasons why this message didn't touch you. But I'm sure that that the Spirit of God was speaking to you about being prompt. I'm not talking about those who have others that influence you to be late and it's not your fault. I understand there's always going to be that in life. We live in a real world. But I'm talking about those that have been chronically and you know the Spirit of God has been working on you for a while now. But today God put it on the front burner in your life and that He was prompt. He did what He said He was going to do at the time He said He was going to do it. He didn't delay His first coming He's not going to delay his second coming. And he's not going to wait around later on to help you to be prompt. He'll immediately begin helping you right now. That's how prompt he is. And you'd like for me to pray for you. And maybe you could say this to the Lord. Lord, I want to exchange my tardiness for your promptness. I'm going to let you live out your life through me. I want to celebrate the new life I have in Christ with this new nature. And Lord, I want you to give me now wisdom. And how I can be wise in knowing what my purpose in life is, what are my priorities, how to set out my plans, and I need you to help me to overcome procrastination. And so, Lord, would you be a part of that now? Take over my life. Is there anyone in here by an uplifted hand, no one looking around, that you would like to have me come alongside you in my prayers and pray for you? You're not making any commitment to me. You're not promising me anything. You're just going to the Lord and now you're just by that silent uplifted hand indicating that you'd like for me to pray for you. Is there anyone in here today that'd like me to do that for him? Would you raise your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I just pray that this message did not fall upon prideful deaf ears. People that want to poke holes in everything that was said just so they can continue doing what they're doing. But that Father, I pray that you're altogether loving gracious, merciful Spirit of God would convict them of their sin, of their blame placing, and for a moment step up to the area of being prompt in their life. Not hasty, not, not doing things without thinking through them carefully. They must do that. It's wise to be analytical, to think it through, but at the same time when it's time to decide that they would do that. Help them, Father, to do that. Let them know that you'll come alongside them and be their friend and at the same time be a gentle convictor of when they're stepping out of bounds and not being prompt. Now, Father, I thank you for this church and how strong they are to want to be godly and how much, Father, you meet them in such a wonderful way. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Joe Pons, and I want to thank you for listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Clarity Christian College. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It's the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. That's makeitclear.org. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please email us at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. That's tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.